Hey guys, Benny Johnson here. Welcome to your third iOS tutorial. Today we will be continuing our Hello Universe project we started in the last tutorial. So if you haven't seen that video, I recommend that you go check that out before proceeding with this tutorial. Now I'm going to go ahead and launch Xcode. You should know how to do this by now. Once Xcode's popped up, I'm going to select the Hello Universe project we started in the last tutorial from the recent section here, and I'm going to click open to open that project. Alright, so normally when you create a new project, you'll be presented with project settings. Now, I'm not going to go through all the elements presented here, but you can notice some interesting ones such as supported device orientation, app icons, and also we have version in information as well as build information. Now, I know learning a new program can be quite intimidating, especially if you've never used an IDE before. If you used an IDE such as Visual Studios or Eclipse, you'll be familiar with some of the elements presented here. If not, don't worry, I'm going to show you how to navigate Xcode and it will become second nature after creating one or two projects in it. Now, as you can notice, we've actually got four main sections here. We've got the main editor area, the left sidebar, the right sidebar. This is called the navigator sidebar, and this is called the utility area. Up the top here, we have the toolbar. And let's go through some of the elements presented here. So at the top, the toolbar, we have the run button. This is quite obvious. It will go ahead and launch a program according to the settings you have in the current active schema, whether or not to launch it in the simulator or on a physical device. The stop button is the same thing. It will just stop the application. And as I said, you can select whether you want the simulator provided in Xcode or the actual physical I.O iOS device and remember that you do have to pay that hundred dollar fee before you can actually test your application on a physical device. Next we have breakpoints. Uh, if you've never heard of them, don't worry. But basically these allow us to go through our application, find errors or problems with it and fix those. Next we have the LCD kind of element here. This displays information to us such as warnings in our program, errors in our program, uh, sometimes downloads or just processes. It's just a nice glanceable information section. Next we have these view settings here and these buttons here toggle the different views for the main editor. So you can see that we're in the standard editor. Now when I click this one with the tuxedo, this is the assistant e editor and you can have two windows within the main area. And we also have this other button here which is called the version editor. But generally you'll be using the standard editor most of the time and sometimes the assistant editor. So I'm going to go back to the main editor. Next we have these view controls and you can toggle the actual views on and off and as you can see the sidebars turn on and off and disappear according to these settings and you can notice that I can actually re reveal this bottom bit which gives us debug information so I'm going to hide that for now and I'm going to open up the navigator area. Now the navigator area is pretty much for navigating your project. You can navigate the files in your project just by clicking them and you can notice that the main editor changes according to the file. As you can see, we're actually viewing some code files here. You can also notice that in the navigator area, we also have these folders, which we can expand. We can also create our own folders within the project. We have these buttons over here and this these buttons just basically change what is actually viewed in the navigator area. So for example, I can go to the schema area and if I select one of these list items from this list, you can notice that I jump to different sections or parts of the code. And this is quite handy. 
Next we have the search feature which just basically allows us to type a term such as interface and it searches all our files and tells us where all that information appears. As you can see I'm switching between the files according to that search term. Next we have the warnings navigator and this basically displays any problems or warnings we may have with our project. And next we have the debug navigator. Don't worry about this for the moment. Next we have the breakpoint list. For example, I talked about this breakpoints button and if I click there it adds a breakpoint for us. But we don't need this so I'm going to delete these and notice that they are removed from the list. And next we have the log section. I've never used that before. Alright, so we went through the navigator area. I'm going to close that off because we don't need it anymore. Next you can notice that we have these buttons here. And we can basically go back and forth within our project just like you can do with a web browser. Next we have these jump bars and these this is useful for jumping to different sections of the program. Say for example I can select that and I can even drill down into the code and different sections of the code and I can change the files and so on and so forth. Alright so the next thing I want to show you is the utility area and this is probably where you're going to be spending most of your time within the sidebars. So I need to show you guys something. So I'm going to show the navigator area because I need to actually select a file and I'm going to select the viewcontroller.xib file. Now you know that you'll notice that there's a picture of an iPhone and this is exactly what it looks like. This is where we can design our actual iPhone interfaces. So when I click on that you notice that we have some more information here we have different buttons here which we can change some settings say for example we've got quick help which gives us some quick information on the selected control or element we also have our classes um, utility which basically allows us to select from different classes and different settings there next we'll have probably the most interesting here is the attributes which is just basically properties for the objects or elements so you can change like the background what you want you can change it to green or whatever that didn't work for some reason but basically that's what you can do in the attribute just change um, properties of that element next we have the size inspector I don't usually use that very often and we have our reference outlets I'm not going to go through that because that's quite an advanced topic now let's go down the bottom this is your actual library and you can select from different libraries using these buttons here now if I go to the actual objects library you can notice some familiar elements that you've seen in iOS applications for example we've got text field, we've got segment control we've got a slider or a switch, a progress bar a table view or text view and a picker view and you'll notice that there's several elements that you'll notice there now for the moment I'm gonna actually start and we're going to actually start creating our application. So I'm going to drag a label across. So click on it, hold it in, and drag it across. to, And just drop it on the actual picture of the iPhone. Now I don't like that green, it's kind of ugly. So I'm going to go back to my attributes and I'm going to change that color. So I'm going to change it to a nice blue. So I'm going to close that off and click it and as you can see those settings are applied. Now I think this label is a little bit too small. I'm going to size this down just to reveal more of the properties and I'm going to increase the size of this just by toggling this up and down. 
as you can see the font size is changing and I'll need to expand this out also. I'm going to double click the label and this will allow us to edit the text. I'm going to type hello universe and I'm going to position it right in there and I'll change the font color so I select it I make sure that my attributes inspector is selected and we go down to the text color property and I'm going to select white there we go and as you can see it says hello universe it's looking pretty sexy and I think we're just about done with that so I'm going to go ahead and run it to see what it looks like so I'm going to click the run button up the top left and we'll start building that project and sometimes you just might have to select that ISO simulator just to bring it up and as you can see it looks pretty much identical to what it is in that view controller editor now that's about it for this tutorial I know it was very long and it was quite long for me but we got through it and we finally created our first iOS application. Now you know different elements of the Xcode and you pretty much have a good basis for navigating it. So I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you guys later.